in some ways it's good to want to fit in and to identify with what others believe and to find people, find your tribe, find your people who agree with you. But within those spaces of people who agree with you or share your perspectives, there's still going to be disagreement. And I think instead of running away from that, we should embrace that and challenge each other to share how we're different without feeling like we're going to be shunned. I tried to record outside today, but I just wasn't feeling the cold. So I wanted to come inside, make myself a cup of green tea, and talk to you a little bit about the differences between our plant-based homestead and maybe a vegetarian or vegan lifestyle, and just go over a little bit about how we're similar and how we might be different. I get a lot of questions, people asking about us being vegan, um, asking about us being vegetarian, and then confusion about what it means to be plant-based. So I wanted to talk about this today and share a little bit about our heart on that choice, as well as provide some awareness about what it means in our lives. So it might sound really simple and straightforward when we say that we're plant-based, and in some ways it is. It essentially means that our diet is based on plants. And so instead of eating a lot of processed meat substitutes or, you know, a lot of animal products or things like that, we're really focused on eating whole foods and as much as possible focusing on the plant-based food options available. So a good example of this is a common thing we do for dinners is we will make bowls. And what we'll do is we'll make some rice or we'll saute some greens or just use some raw salad greens. We'll top it off with some roasted vegetables, maybe some black beans. We'll add in avocado, maybe a good sauce, a lot of hot sauce and tomato sauces and different things like that. And then we might top it off with a fried egg, which technically is not a whole food or a plant-based food, but it is, but it does kind of capture the fact that we are plant-based and not only eating plants. So that's how we might be different a little bit than maybe a vegan lifestyle, but in many ways we are very similar. So the two differences that we have in our diet that make us differ from a vegan lifestyle are the fact that we eat eggs and we eat honey. A lot of people forget that vegans don't eat honey and that's because people just don't really think of bees as an animal. But vegans will tell you why they don't eat honey and they have you know, some great ethical reasons for not doing so. Here at our farm, we eventually want to keep some bees and focus on increasing the bee population as well as supporting healthy pollinators for our garden. So we don't see an ethical problem for us with consuming honey. And with the eggs, we do keep chickens here at the farm. Our chickens are heritage breeds, which means they are not hybrids bred for high egg production. It's kind of similar to what you think of as like an heirloom tomato versus a hybrid tomato, meaning it's been established over such a long period of time. So essentially, that's what makes us different than a vegan lifestyle in that we do consume those two animal products. If you have questions about that, feel free to ask below. We would definitely appreciate questions as opposed to hateful messages or things like that. If you have a good question, we would love to answer it and provide you with more information on our perspective. Because likely, if you disagree with what we're doing, um, it has to do with us having different perspectives to begin with. So, what about vegetarians? We don't call ourselves vegetarians, although we technically are, and that's generally because vegetarians often consume dairy products, which is a little different than our lifestyle here. We don't consume dairy 
dairy products and that's just because of the connection between the dairy industry and the meat industry. Also, in addition to that, Chris and I, our systems don't handle milk well. Chris is definitely lactose intolerant. He would always have a really upset stomach after eating pizza and not realize why. Um, and dairy, I haven't had dairy in a really long time. I stopped drinking milk in high school and have just really enjoyed the plant-based options available. For us, it's just not worth it to consume meat or dairy. It's not something we really want in our lives. And the emotional turmoil of having to go through keeping animals and butchering animals and all of that, uh, we just don't see it being something we need or are called to do. And that kind of gives a little bit of perspective on the plant-based diet versus maybe a vegan or vegetarian one. And at the end of the day, I really love embracing the term plant-based because I do think that a plant-based diet would be beneficial for everyone. And that's not saying that everybody should be exactly like us, but what I do mean is that focusing more on getting as much of your nutrients as possible from the garden or from preserved vegetables or fruits or things like that is really good for our health and it can be such a good way to make sure we're getting all those vitamins and minerals. That's one reason why I really have loved embracing the plant-based diet. I think it's a great middle ground and it's such a focus on getting whole foods into your diet and routine and what you cook. And it's also so easy to do in a lot of different environments. You can grow a lot of food in such a small space in a garden. I've been wanting to share more videos on this subject since I posted Can You Homestead as a vegetarian or vegan? Um, and I got a lot of feedback on that video people who were excited about what we're doing and wanting to hear more about how we have this homesteading lifestyle while we also have a plant-based diet and there's one message that I really want to share about this Culture will tell you that if you embrace a certain identity that you have to embrace it 100% and that everything you do has to match up with that one identity. For example, you might love so many aspects of the feminist movement, but there might be some things you, you don't love, but you feel like because everybody else is really pushing 100% of what that system believes in, that you have to fit that mold perfectly. It's the same thing with veganism. I've heard many vegans say you can't be vegan 80% you're 100% or you're not at all. I don't like those messages because what I think is that they keep people who want to embrace community or want to embrace identity from doing so because they feel shunned for maybe being a little bit different. And I think we're all made so different and we're all so unique that it's okay if we don't embrace everything that one community is telling us we need to. And so I've been really attracted to the homesteading movement. I love following homesteading channels and learning about what they're doing and growing and I've been so motivated by this community and wanting to be embraced by it but I've also felt pressure like because we're not raising meat animals or because we don't focus on animal products that we're not fully accepted by this community and that's that's not true I putting that I'm putting that pressure on myself because I feel like culture just says we have to be a hundred percent like the group we're a part of and so I wanted to share our perspective on our plant-based lifestyle because for me it's just allowed me to embrace multiple parts of who I am at the same time and not feel ashamed or afraid to share that. I'm an animal lover, I'm emotionally attached to animals. To me, it's not worth it to raise me animals. But I also love sustainability. I love the idea of self-sufficiency and growing our own food, which is a part of the homesteading movement. In our culture, we see a lot of this right now um, with political parties. So you feel like, I don't agree 100% with what they're saying, but I like this message. Or, or you might agree 100%, but then it conflicts with another identity that you have. And it feels like this constant battle between trying to stick with what you believe, but also trying to fit in with a community of other people. And so I just challenge you to focus more on where you're being called and where you're being led and your convictions and less on what other people want you to believe because I think that's where we can really grow and find real true community because when we all feel the exact same way about something that's boring and it doesn't challenge us to grow as human beings so I'm excited about the opportunity to be exploring these multiple parts of who I am 
you know, whether it's my Christian identity or uh, being plant-based or having a homestead or working in the field of research, uh, being a PhD student or, you know, being a wife and maybe one day a mother. So there's all these different identities and I don't have to choose one or the other. I can embrace where my life is taking me and take who I am into all those different spaces, not worrying about who is going to reject me or accept me, but just focusing on being true to myself. We talk a lot about going against the grain and not living in a box. And I think even when we say that, sometimes we still end up going in the grain in these smaller subculture <laughs> groups. Um, and then we end up looking the same, just like somebody else, because it's easy to want to fit in. And in some ways it's good to want to fit in and to identify with what others believe and to find people, find your tribe, find your people who agree with you. But within those spaces of people who agree with you or share your perspectives, there's still going to be disagreement. And I think instead of running away from that, we should embrace that and challenge each other to share how we're different without feeling like we're going to be shunned. So that's the message I wanted to share. I'm gonna to continue to explore that in my own life and I would love to hear your perspectives on embracing multiple identities of, of who you are and trying to make them all work together and accepting your own unique self. Comment below, let me know, have you struggled with this? Have you felt pressure to drop off one of your identities or to feel like you have to be a certain way even when you're just not? I think we all struggle here. I think we all feel pressure to fit in these boxes that have been assigned to us and fear about what people would think if we step out of those boxes. So I want to encourage you today to try to break out of that box because it's really, really free. That's when you can really grow. I want to continue exploring this and if you're excited about this idea of actually going against the grain and living outside of these boxes, I would love to have you be a part of my journey in this area. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for joining our adventure. Please subscribe if you haven't. Stay tuned for our next video where we are going to give you an update on our debt-free journey and where we're at in our first month embarking on that mission towards living a lifestyle of financial financial freedom. I'm excited to talk to you about that in Monday's video. I thank you for watching and I can't wait to share my next video with you.